Hey, it's Karen. Welcome to this episode of A Touch of Genius, your place to get curious about your personal ingenuity and develop your potential. Together, we're going to discover how to break down and break through limitations so we can shine brighter. We'll find out how this helps us create a better life experience wherever we are and explore its far-reaching implications. We'll also be learning more about how someone else's touch of genius impacts us. Get your notebook and cookies ready, and let's dive into this episode. So, now that we're all settled in, I wanted to thank you for being here. You could have chosen to listen to any other podcast, but you chose this one, and I really appreciate that. I'm honored to be your host and co-pilot in this journey as we explore different avenues to develop our highest potential. Today, we'll kick off with the main question, what is genius and why should it matter to you? Whenever you think of the word genius, you probably think of highly creative and renowned people such as Marie Curie, Hedy Lamarr, Albert Einstein, or Michelangelo. But how often do you think of yourself in this context? I bet you don't. In fact, you may well brush it off or shrink at the sound of it like it's something elusive to you. Or you might think about it in secret, but don't dare to tell anyone. But what if genius was just something dormant within you? Something you had disengaged from at an earlier time in your life. Something that could be restored, polished, and made to shine really, really bright. Wouldn't that feel good? Doesn't that spark your curiosity? I don't know about you, but I grew up in a house full of books, music, and creativity. Rare was the weekend that we weren't reading, helping my dad fix something around the house, or diving into some other creative interest. This is actually how my cartoon character Nikki Al came about, but I'll leave that story for another day. For now, all you need to know is that my two greatest dreams as a young girl were to publish books and have my own cartoon character. With such a rich blend of activities, I was inadvertently developing major neurological pathways of creativity and psychomotor learning whilst having fun. It turns out we learn best when we don't even think that we're learning, but we're deeply immersed in the activity at hand, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Ask any Lego play or play therapy expert about that. And by the way, I'm not being sponsored by Lego, although I do have a great love for Lego as it was, quite literally, one of the building blocks of my childhood. Having access to so much literature and information did set me apart from most of my classmates, who didn't all seem to share my same interests. It didn't really bother me so much as I was also very shy at the time, and I was able to read up on a lot of things that filled my growing brain with fascinating information. I wasn't your typical A student, but I did excel at certain subjects over others. I was bookish, quiet, perhaps a little bit quirky, and respected my teachers for the knowledge they could impart for my thirsty mind to soak up. Also, I came to realize that my family and I had a completely different thing going on than many of the families we knew, and that's something we'll also go deeper on in other episodes regarding family dynamics and the environment in which we grow up. I was inspired by many of the great creators that we consider to be geniuses, like Leonardo da Vinci, Mozart, Beethoven, Picasso, My fascination with the concept of genius has lasted my entire life. At times, I'll admit I've fallen into comparison mode with some of my favorite creators, which has held me back a bit, not knowing at the time that they were meant to inspire, not to make me think, I'll never be like so-and-so. Because here's the thing, you are meant to be you, and I am meant to be me. We'll talk about comparison in future episodes. Right now, I'm going to tell you the story of how this podcast came to be. It actually begins with a t-shirt I made about 10 years ago. I had recently published my first Nikki Owl novel and was starting to use the coaching tools I had learned as a way to help others improve their own lives. I was looking for creative ways to generate coaching clients, so I took inspiration from one of our beloved cartoon characters, Lucy from Peanuts. If you recall, Lucy would set up her psychiatry booth to offer advice to anyone who came by and asked. I decided to plant myself in local coffee shops, placing a handmade sign on my table that said, Life-changing conversations here hoping to attract the interest of people to sit down and talk. I recognized the difficulty in attracting random conversations like this, but nevertheless I gave it a shot, mostly for my own personal exercise in extending myself to strangers, because if you're introverted like me, you understand how challenging that can be sometimes. I tried out different coffee shops to no avail, until at one of them, the owner politely asked me not to solicit any work. Now, I wasn't actually asking for anyone to pay me for the random conversations, although I was happy for someone to buy me a coffee if they felt the conversation held value for them. This was intended to be a way to connect with people, help them, and make a name for myself in the area. The coffee shop owner was happy for me to leave my business card on the bulletin board instead, 
but somehow that felt too small and too easy to glance past for me. This gave me another idea, which was to create something that nobody could really tell me not to do or have. A t-shirt that simply said, Hello Genius, bright red with white text, a perfectly wearable invitation to talk. Genius. Shortly after, I relocated to another town and state, and it was there that with my newfound branding and another coffee shop that became my networking space, I felt spurred on to have many conversations about the subject of genius. I discovered that most people don't think of themselves as geniuses or as having genius. They shied away from this concept, even though they had their own set of talents and abilities. For them, the idea of genius was something high up there, out of reach for them, only accessible for certain masters like the ones I mentioned before. But why is it that so many people deny themselves their own potential? Why have we separated ourselves from the idea that we too could be geniuses or do genius things? I got more and more curious, interviewed more people, and dug deeper into my research for a book I was also working on about genius. It all came to a long pause, however, when I found myself relocating yet again to another city and state, only to eventually return to my home country a year or so later. Yes, I've moved around a lot. The genius idea got boxed away, although it kept coming back to me every now and then until I reached another pivot point in my life. Everything I've been experiencing has led me to rekindle this idea and bring it to you now in this podcast. The book is still half finished, although I'm pretty sure the podcast will push me to complete it soon. Or perhaps the book has been asking me to make the podcast. Hmm. You see, everything is symbiotic once you start to explore and understand your connection with energy and the universal laws. For now, I'm happy to work on this podcast to engage in more conversations with people around the world, helping them awaken their genius self so we can all contribute to a happier and healthier society. So, that being said, what is genius anyway, and why should it matter to you? We all inherently feel the drive to be someone or do something with our lives, although you may find that some people claim they don't. Deep inside, there is a desire that may have been stepped on, suffocated, or put to sleep somehow. Yet, it's still in there somewhere, waiting to be held, understood, and given the chance and safety to come out. It's associated with our sense of purpose and meaning. Vincent van Gogh is a classic example of someone who felt the drive within to do something with his life, to be of service somehow. He took a while to find his own passion, working as a gallery dealer, teacher, bookseller, and street minister, until he turned to art at age 29. This is the typical age for our first Saturn return for any of you who are into astrology and its effect on us. Like Van Gogh, there are many examples of adults who even at a later stage in their lives have come to find their true calling and given themselves permission to live it. Thankfully, they had a better outcome than our dear friend Vincent. Throughout this podcast, I'll be highlighting certain geniuses in each episode. Today, I'd like to start with the most important one, possibly one you have never heard of and may take you by surprise. It might even knock your socks off. That genius is, wait for it, you. Yes, you. No, Karen, not me. I'm not a genius. Forget it. No. Yes, I'm talking to you. I would love for you to take a moment and breathe in the very possibility of your own personal genius. That brilliance within you which, when you let it out and let yourself be you from the heart, makes the room light up and makes everyone turn their heads wondering, who's that person? Okay, I get it. Maybe you don't want everyone staring at you. I respect that. It can be awkward. But at the very least, would you play along with me for a while? Would you begin to look at yourself as someone capable of shining brightly in this world, living with joy, living with purpose, and a healthy feeling of fulfillment? Can you do that? Just try it for a little bit every day. And if you're already doing it, but would like to find out how to keep improving as a human being, congratulations and welcome aboard. I promise, if you're starting it now, or you've already been doing this for a while, you'll feel much better. And if you've got kids, I guarantee they will too. Because we're all connected. That's really what genius is all about. Tapping into that pure life force energy, letting it show us what we're capable of, and then doing it. There's so much beauty we can create when we put our minds and hearts to it. Just look at all the wonderful examples we have already to serve as a reminder and inspiration for you. Or just look at some freshly baked cookies like the ones I baked today. That'll do too. But seriously, if you're someone who really wants to see positive changes in this world, well guess what? It starts with you and me polishing our stardust. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to it now, shall we? 
First, we'll unpack the origins of the word genius and its various interpretations. Then we'll start talking about how it affects each and every one of us. Ready? Set? Genius. Genius is viewed as an innate intellectual ability or creative power of an exceptional kind. An instinctive and extraordinary capacity for imaginative creation, original thought, invention, or discovery. It was originally applied to artists and poets whose particular kind of intellectual or creative power seemed to come from inspiration, arriving at their results inexplicably and miraculously. Could it be magic? The term genius can also be used to refer to specific moments, to people characterized by genius, or to polymaths who excel across multiple subjects. One of our most prominent historical examples of a polymath is probably Leonardo da Vinci. At least, he's the first one that comes to mind for me. Who comes to mind for you? Genius is expressed in a variety of forms, like artistic, mathematical, literary, musical. People with genius tend to have strong intuitions about their disciplines. Carl Rogers, a founder of the humanistic approach to psychology, expands on the idea of a genius trusting his or her intuition in a given field with the following example. El Greco must have realized, as he looked at some of his early work, that good artists do not paint like that. But somehow he trusted his own experiencing of life, the process of himself, sufficiently that he could go on expressing his own unique perceptions. It was as though he could say, good artists don't paint like this, but I paint like this. If you're not acquainted with El Greco, he was a Greek painter, sculptor, and architect of the Spanish Renaissance. His actual name was Dominicos Theotokopoulos. Don't ask me to say that any faster. El Greco is Spanish for the Greek. His dramatic and expressionistic style puzzled his contemporaries, but was later appreciated in the 20th century. El Greco is regarded as a precursor of Expressionism and Cubism, and he's been characterized by modern scholars as an artist so individual that he belongs to no conventional school. A misfit, we might say. The thing about most geniuses is that they typically go against the grain, and that's where so many of our inventions, innovations, and thought leadership comes from. People daring to be, do, and think differently because they feel a certain push from within. Back to genius. The word itself comes from the Latin genius, meaning the divine or spiritual part of each individual, the spirit of a place, inspiration, a person endowed with talent, or a spiritual being in general. The Latin name genius came from the ancient Greek ginyere, meaning to come into being, to take place, to be born. This would explain why the concept of genius is also so heavily associated with creation and creativity. The Latin noun was also borrowed into other Romance languages with the same spelling but different pronunciations of the word genio in Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese. For the ancient Romans, the genius was the individual instance of a general divine nature that was present in every person, place, or thing. Just like a guardian angel, the genius would accompany each man from his birth until his death. For women, it was the Juno spirit that would accompany them. Classical pagan belief holds that genius is the attendant spirit assigned to every person at birth to govern their fortunes and determine personal character, and finally to lead them out of this world. It's also been considered as either of two mutually opposed spirits imagined as accompanying a person throughout his or her life, exerting either a good or bad influence. If you've watched Tom and Jerry cartoons, you'll remember the angel and devil characters that sit on their shoulders, helping them come to some sort of moral decision. The Arabic noun jinn signified intelligent spirits or genies. In the Arabian belief, it symbolizes an intelligent, morally responsible being of an order inferior in rank to angels, having supernatural powers and typically capable of assuming the form of a human or an animal. No doubt this will make you think of the famous tale of Aladdin and the genie in the lamp. Fast forward to the Renaissance, where the concept of genius made its way into English in the early 15th century. Part of a genius's role was considered to protect a person's moral character. During the 16th century, this evolved into a sense of genius meaning an identifying character or natural ability. This in turn led to the sense of an exceptional natural ability in the mid-17th century. In time, genius came to mean very great intellectual power and to be applied to people who have such power. All of that to say that we somehow ended up putting the individual at the center of everything so that the concept of genius shifted into the idea that creativity came from within the self. This is where we started to consider people as being a genius instead of having a genius. This is probably also where it began to impact our sense of potential and identity. Genius is regarded as a higher quality than talent, with which it has often been contrasted. 
the German writers of the 18th century formed the distinction between genius and talent, and this was fine-tuned over time, such that the one term is hardly ever defined without referring to the other. Just try it. When you think of genius, doesn't it immediately bring to mind people with some sort of talent? Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher and one of the central Enlightenment thinkers, said, Genius is a talent for producing something for which no determinate rule can be given, not a predisposition consisting of a skill for something that can be learned by following some rule or other. They liked to write long sentences, didn't they? In other words, genius is the ability to independently arrive at and understand concepts that would normally be taught by somebody else. For Kant, originality was the essential character of genius. In Arthur Schopenhauer's philosophy, a genius is someone in whom intellect predominates over will much more than in the average person. In his words, talent hits a target no one else can hit, genius hits a target no one else can see. Bertrand Russell's philosophy proposes that genius requires that an individual possess unique qualities and talents that make the genius especially valuable to the society in which he or she operates when they're given the chance to contribute to society. Russell's philosophy further maintains that such geniuses can be crushed in their youth and lost forever when the environment around them is unsympathetic to their traits. We will definitely explore this in other episodes. Craig Wright, PhD and author of The Hidden Habits of Genius, a book I highly recommend you read, summarizes it as, Geniuses change the world through original thinking that alters the actions and values of society. He also expresses that genius should not be confused with celebrity, which typically has a one-off effect and then culture moves on to the next thing. Celebrity can, however, befall a genius. By diving deeper into the primary cultures and philosophies that formed our idea of genius, we see great similarities across the board. Not only are the words themselves quite similar in pronunciation in various languages of large neighboring regions, but also their interpretations, most of them focusing on a spiritual or divine element which imbues the individual with a tangible ability or result. So, now that we've got our foundation set, let's start looking at what this means for you and your personal abilities. If you're listening to this podcast, there must be something that led you here. Perhaps you felt there's more within you that you haven't tapped into yet, and I'd love for us to explore that together. No filters, no judgment, no shying away saying, no, but that's not me. Okay? Okay. So, Throughout this podcast, we're going to explore the relationship between humans and this divine essence that guides our creations and creativity. Are we geniuses or do we have a genius? Does it even matter which one it is? First, we'll go back to my original question of whether you see yourself as having this thing called genius. Maybe that word seems too big for you. Yet, how often have you wondered if you had some latent talent that could change your life and perhaps change the lives of other people? What did you imagine about yourself as a child that you stopped imagining, and why? What if what we're really talking about is the essence of your brilliance? We can all relate to that word better, can't we? Brilliance comes alive when we find our passion, our joy. It's in the things that we typically feel drawn to doing without anyone telling us to do them. The activities that make us lose track of time in a positive and constructive way. This brings us back to energy, that driving force that moves us to do something from within. What is that energy that passes through us, guiding us to write, play, or create something? How can we capture its essence for longer periods of time? Is genius related to our neurology somehow? And can we improve it if we improve our brains? How can genius affect our personal relationships, finances, career choices, even our health? And what about the children? Some people might say there isn't enough space for everyone in this world to be a genius. But that's only if your view of genius is based solely on the master creators we know about and people who make it big or make big money with their exceptional gifts and contributions. Yet we all should have the opportunity to develop ourselves as far as we can, regardless of who will become a world-renowned inventor, artist, or creator of something. We all have the capacity to create, and we should all get to experience our personal brilliance, our personal genius. If we agree that we come from this divine spirit or essence, then we agree that we both embody it and are enlightened by it. The main challenge would be not to let it get to our heads and have our ego run rampant with it. In other episodes, we'll talk about this unfortunate aspect. Whatever your cultural background, spiritual or scientific inclinations, or concept of the world, what we do share is the pursuit of our own excellence. We also share many limiting beliefs that stop us from achieving our own brand of greatness. And that's what this podcast is really going to dig into, 
so that we can all experience our potential instead of just sitting around dreaming about it, getting frustrated if we're not living it, or hoping it will show up with the click of a button. So, we're going to make this interactive, and I encourage you to take notes. Go get a pen and paper if you don't have them handy already, and then come back to the podcast. Now, you're going to write down answers to the following three questions. You can pause this podcast after each question and write your answers, then hit play. Remember, nobody else has to see what you're writing at this point. This is just for you. It's time to get comfortable exploring this part of you. Here we go. 1. When you think of the word genius as it relates to you, what thoughts or feelings come to mind? 2. What memories do you have of people talking you up or talking you down for something you enjoyed doing or were really good at? What did that make you believe about yourself? 3. Is there something you've been wanting to create or a talent you'd like to explore that you've had on hold which you secretly long to develop? Write it down in detail, including your thoughts and feelings about it. Now I'd like you to think of somebody you admire, somebody whose abilities, talents or achievements inspire you. Write down your answers to the next three questions. 1. Who is that person? What do they do? And how do they make you feel? 2. What would you consider to be their best qualities? 3. Which of these do you feel you're lacking in, but would love to have, and why? Okay, here's a little secret. Those qualities you admire in them, you actually have them. You're probably just not using them much, whether it's because you're shy, you're afraid, or you don't believe in yourself. Because if those qualities didn't resonate with you, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. You are seeing in them something that is in you already that needs to come out. What you want to do is start modeling those qualities within yourself. Modeling is just a fancy word for taking inspiration and doing it. It might feel awkward at first because you're not used to it. And it's not about copying that person because you want to be you, authentically you. It's just like when we learn how to paint in art class. We're typically asked to try out the different styles and techniques of other artists, whether it's George Surratt's pointillism, Vincent van Gogh's swirly brush strokes, or Pablo Picasso's cubism. This is intended to help build our skill sets and eventually develop our own style. The same happens when we model other people's qualities or behaviors. We're trying them on for size in order to adapt them as we feel best and most genuine for us to expand our own potential. Okay, how was that? What did you discover about yourself? Did you feel any blockages, any self-doubt rising to the surface? Or perhaps you felt some butterflies in your stomach as a sign of possibility? I'd love to know. By the way, you can download a PDF of these questions directly from the show notes on your podcast platform or via my website by going to karenpinter.com forward slash podcast and clicking into this episode's feature page. You'll find other links to resources I've used or mentioned in this episode. You may also find some cookies. This idea of genius doesn't have to be a label, rather a guide for us to follow our passions, our purpose, the things that inspire us to grow ourselves and see what we are truly capable of. It's like our inner North Star. I believe we're spiritual beings living a human existence on this plane. We're energy that was created out of something and has the innate ability to create other things, hence the divine, or scientific, nature of genius. It's how we choose to channel our energy that matters not just to ourselves, but to the people around us that our actions impact somehow. We can shy away from our gifts, talents and abilities, or we can have the courage and curiosity to explore them and see where they lead us. It's also not about putting ourselves under pressure to be like those geniuses from the past, but of giving ourselves permission and the chance to see what we can contribute to our world. It's easy to say, everything's already been invented, or worse, I don't have time to do all the things I want to do. But here's the catch. Have you really given yourself the chance to do it? And is it possible that you may be looking at life from a lack mentality? Both of those things can change because you have free will, and one can always learn to reorganize, reprioritize, and recommit. Also, those geniuses from the past, they had a lot more time on their hands and our world functioned in a different way. They didn't have all the distractions we have now, so they could make far better use of their productive time and their boredom. You see, we need a certain amount of downtime to let our brains assimilate information and offer up ideas without all the noise. How many so-called genius moments have happened because somebody was literally sitting in a bathtub or sitting under a tree and they had some major epiphany that changed our world? They were simply being. How often do you give yourself that time and space to just be? Think about it. 
How often have you found yourself accessing a perfect solution to a problem while simply staring at a tree, looking up at the sky, or maybe even just washing the dishes? Things that don't require conscious effort, but allow you to ease into and receive ideas. There are many people whose moments of genius have impacted communities worldwide or simply helped improve their family dynamics because they dared to try something different. Your world may be simply your family or you, your partner, your work and a handful of other people. Yet everything you do has an impact on the people around you, which creates a domino effect in them. We can plant seeds of positivity and kindness, or we can tear through a place like an angry bear in a fancy store. I don't know what an angry bear would be doing in a fancy store, but let's just roll with that one, shall we? Life isn't about sitting around being comfortable all the time either. It's about expanding our minds, our talents, our abilities, and in doing so, making life better. This gives comfort to our sole purpose. Imagine something with me for a minute. What if we were all living our potential and this was the expansive energy that we're all experiencing? It's easy to scoff at the idea as utopic and blame other people for their negativity or harmful actions in what can appear to be a dark and dreary world at times, and I'm not denying that those actions do exist. But if we keep beating that drum, then that is all that we will see, because what you focus on grows. There is genius in changing our perception of the world to see what we wish for it to become, and for each one of us to act accordingly so that it does. This is called alignment. This is when you step from helpless mode into conscious creator mode. We've had many examples of luminaries pass through our lives for thousands of years across continents, encouraging us to take that powerful energy of creation and use it for our collective good. Whether it's as teachers, healers, innovators, artists, or simply good neighbors, genius is something that lives within each of us and surrounds us all because we are made of that same energy. The question is, are we channeling it within ourselves or blocking it? Do we encourage it in others or do we put out their light? It doesn't matter what your cultural background or belief systems are. The purpose of this podcast is to help amplify that genius spirit that lives within all of us and that can be brought to light to make our world and communities better. However you relate, here's to the genius in you. I hope you found some valuable insights in this episode and I can't wait to hear from you. Oh, and remember that t-shirt? You'll find it on my website in more colors now than just red and white. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, I'd like to invite you to subscribe so that you can keep up to date with the next ones. Please share it with somebody you think will find value in it, and I'll see you on the next one. As we wrap up today's show, I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. It means a lot to me. You see, whenever we create something, we always take a leap of faith into the unknown, and we don't always know how it'll work out. That's part of what this podcast is about. Encouraging all of us to take leaps of faith on our ideas, dreams, and creations, and having a safe space to explore them, to build the strength to get back up when we fall, and to celebrate when we fly high. I'd love to know what your big takeaway is from this episode. Tell me what you're working through and what you'd like to know more about. Also, is there someone you'd like me to interview on the topic of genius? Let me know. Email me at hello at karenpinter.com or message me on my socials. In the meantime, Take care of your genius self.